So today, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this 75 minute all levels flow. For props, we'll be using two blocks. You can also use books if you don't have blocks and also a blanket is nice to use for practice. Um, you might wanna pin me so that I'm big on your screen. And if you enjoy practicing with music, I sent out a playlist, you can hit play on that playlist. And let's go ahead and get started. Today we'll begin on our backs. So just come on down gently to your back. The feet can be planted on the mat. Finding a comfortable position here. <clears throat> and we'll begin to draw our awareness into the body, into our practice. Letting go of any thoughts of the rest of the day and just really being present in this moment. Let's take a nice deep cleansing breath together. Drawing breath in slowly through the nose. And let it go out the mouth. You can make some noise here. You might take another like that. Inhaling deeply and slowly. Filling the body with fresh air. And just releasing it all, letting it go. And then begin to find a natural depth and rhythm for your breath. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose. It's nice to use Ujjayi breath, which is audible ocean sounding breath during yoga practice. The sound of the breath is a great way to stay attuned to the present moment and to check in with the body and make sure that the body's feeling good. So Ujjayi breath, you, you inhale and exhale through the nose. And the breath gets pressed through the palate or the roof of the mouth. And then that way you can hear the sound of the inhales. And hear the sound of the exhales. The exhales are like um, fogging a mirror. So you can practice by pretending to fog a mirror on the exhale. And then do that same breath but with the mouth closed. So using our Ujjayi breath here, let's let the knees gently fall open, the palm soles of the feet will touch. And we can cactus the arms, or if space allows, you might open the arms to a T. Breathing here, beginning to let gravity start to do some work for us, opening the hips, opening the area of the chest, the heart space, and the shoulders. Inhaling here as you exhale, just let the head fall to the right. Inhale through center and let the head fall to the left. A couple time, more times on each side. Starting to bring some small movement into the cervical spine. And then pause at center. And as you inhale, reach out through the fingertips, really stretching the arms out wide. As you exhale, give yourself a hug, wrapping one arm over the other. The arms can reach behind you to the shoulder blades. You might even give yourself a, a real hug. And gently press on the shoulder, shoulder area, just for a little massage. As you inhale here, feel the back body expand, that space between the ribs, between the shoulder blades. And then let that breath go. On an inhale, stretch those arms wide, again, all the way to the fingertips. And as you exhale, cross them over the body the other way, giving the soft a hug, maybe even a gentle massage. Drawing awareness on the inhale. 
inhale to the expansion between the shoulder blades. That's the area of the thoracic spine. When we inhale, coming back to center, cactus the arms here. You can send the um, knees back up toward the side. Inhale here. As you exhale, draw the arms together in front of you. Palms touch, and if possible, the elbows touch. From here, scoop the right arm under left and draw the left arm across the chest. So I'm just going to sit up so you can see what this looks like. So it's a stretch of the um, tricep. And as you're doing this, notice that the left shoulder has kind of come off the mat and see if you can plug it back in onto the mat. And as you inhale, come back to center, palms and elbows touch. Scoop left under right and draw the right arm across the body. So taking the stretch to the other side. Again, noticing what's going on with the shoulder. If it's off the mat, see if you can plug it back in. This helps isolate the stretch to the tricep. And then inhale, release. Let's draw the knees to the chest. And make some big hip circles here, knees together. About three wide circles in one direction and three in the other. And then drawing them into center, squeezing them in on an exhale, inhaling here, and then let them just gently fall to the left for a spinal twist. It's early in practice. If your low back is tight, I recommend using your blocks or books here between the legs to lift the right knee. Your arms can be wide, gaze can be up toward the ceiling or over the right hand. Deep, full inhales, slow, complete exhales. If you notice areas of tension, see if you can use the breath to soften those places. As you inhale, come back to center. You can keep the book or blocks between the knees if you use them, and then just let the knees fall to the other side. Easy spinal twist. Again, the gaze can be at the ceiling, or perhaps it falls and follows your left outstretched hand. And then returning to center, removing any props. Extend the legs toward the ceiling, arms toward the ceiling, and let's roll out ankles and wrists. A few times in each direction. And then flex and point with hands and wrists. And then we'll press the balls of the feet toward the sky and inhale, reaching the arms overhead. The low back is pressing into the mat and this chin gently tucks to lengthen the spine. So here we inhale. And as we exhale, reach to those toes, engaging the core. Inhale, arms down. Exhale, hands to toes. Inhale, back. Exhale, toes. Inhale, back. Toes. Last one. And reach. See if you can hold. Three, two, one. Let everything go. Let's take happy baby pose, reaching for the outer edges of the feet, if that's accessible to you, or you can hold the knees. You want the knees drawn toward the outer ribs. You can rock side to side here. This is a good low back release. And then let's pause in the center, <clears throat> draw knees to chest, and holding behind the knees, we'll rock up and back three times. At the top, we'll balance on the tailbone. So balancing on the tail here, I'd like you to bring your toes to the mat and tend your fingers behind you. Roll the shoulders back and press the chest forward. 
because you feel that it's the pores start to engage. And from here, we're going to move into bows. So see if you can bring shapes parallel to the mat. If you've got this, you might lift the arms, reaching them forward, palms up, gaze lifts. Beautiful work. Breathing for three, two, and one. Release the legs down, and we'll come to a comfortable seat. So finding a comfortable seat, lengthening the spine, compressing into the mat with tension fingertips to just, again, bring length, and then gently tuck the chin. So we'll take a breath here, just feeling this stable seat, feeling some groundedness through the lower body, and some lift through the upper body. And then inhale, let the ear fall to the right, We'll roll the chin forward and the left ear to left shoulder. And let's do that again, coming back through center, ear to shoulder. And again. And then come to center. Let's lift the chin up to the sky and make really big circles with the chin. So bringing some full range of motion into the neck. And then take those circles the other way. And bring the chin to center. I'm dizzy. <laughs> I hope you're not dizzy. And then we'll pause here for a moment. Let's inhale, reaching the arms out. Again, stretching out to the fingertips, reaching up to the sky, drawing the palms into heart center. This is Anjali Mucha, Mudra, Prayer Pose. We'll take a breath here, and as you exhale, reverse the hands, so press the wrists, the back of the wrists together. See if you can relax the shoulders, keeping the spine long, and breathing. And then let's release the arms. We'll press them out as though there's walls on either side of us. And we're pressing the walls away. And then point the fingers down. And imagine pressing the walls away with the backs of your palms. We'll do that one more time. Up, palms, fingers up. And then fingers down. And now let's make fists and see if you can make figure eights with those wrists. And then try the other way, which is tricky. Excellent. And then we'll release the hands down, and we're going to do something called dancing hands. So plant the palms. Actually, I like to come up onto um, knees into hero pose. I find it easier to manipulate my hands and wrists, so you can try the same. So planting the palms on the mat, fingers are going to face forward. And then we're going to flip the hands so the palms face up and the fingers face back. Breathing here. This is an intense one. Try to relax the shoulders. Don't, if you shouldn't feel pain, so don't be pressing too hard, but you should feel a stretch. And then bring um, palms down, fingers forward, and then rotate so your fingers are out, palms are down. We'll breathe here. And then let's flip that so the fingers are in and the palms are up. Two deep rounds of breath. And then release all of that. And we're just going to shake. Shake them out. So you might close your eyes. Let's take three deep breaths. Keep shaking it in, shake, shake, shake it out. If that's painful, don't do it. The, the, the main point is just to release. Great. So from there, we'll take some um, shoulder circles. So lifting the shoulders up to the um, ears and releasing them down the back. 
Shoulders to the ears, releasing down the back. Shoulders to the ears, releasing down the back. And let's switch directions. Excellent. From here, we come to tabletop. So for wrist sensitivity, <clears throat> Tabletop, you can always take on fists. And I'll demonstrate here, so in case you'd like to try it. You, you have your um, thumbs are pointing forward, and so the fingers are pointing inward. Wrists are under shoulders, hips are over knees. From here, let's take a round of cat cow, two rounds of cat cow. So in the pressing the spine up towards the side, really give space between the shoulder blades. And as you exhale, arch the back, draw the heart forward, and see if you can really press the shoulders back onto the back. So inhaling to cat, exhaling to cow. Move your own pace. Taking a few more rounds here. Chest. You can try to 
down to the chin, gazing forward and breathing. Returning your third eye squeeze to the mat. Let's bring the hands close to the shoulders <clears throat> and we'll sit back in child's pose. And then we're going to move through a modified vinyasa. So let's inhale, coming up onto all fours. We'll set the hips in front of the knees. This is modified, right? Lengthening the spine, tucking the chin. Exhale, bringing the arms, the elbows in tight to the ribs. So we lower all the way down to the belly. And then inhale, pressing the head and neck shoulders forward, rolling the shoulders down the back. And as you exhale, press into the mat and send your hips to your heels, child's pose. One breath here. And let's take that again. So we'll come up to tabletop. This time, if you'd like to try it on fists, you may. So again, the thumbs kind of face forward. We inhale the modified plank. Exhale, bending the elbows, coming down tight to the ribs. Chin comes down first, then belly. Inhale and look cobra. Exhale, pressing into the fists or palms. Child's pose. This time, we're going to press forward to our modified plank. Come down to the forearms. Modify forearm plank. And we're going to begin building a little bit of strength in the shoulders. So if you're able to or want to, tuck the toes and draw the um, hips toward the side. We want a flat back, long spine, forearm plank. We'll hold here for three, for two, and one. Excellent. Drop the knees down, drop the hips down. And then see if you can roll the shoulders down the back as in the chest forward, sphinx pose. So warming up the spine. The gaze can be low, the chin can tuck. And we're breathing. Excellent. Let's drop the head down, send the, um, send the palms by the shoulders, tuck the toes, and press up to plank. So from plank, we'll inhale here. Exhale back, chop to downward facing dog. Pressing into one foot and then the other. Mindful in our down dog to roll the shoulders down the back. And a good way to do this is by really pressing into all parts of the palms and checking if your ears are creeping your, your shoulders are peeking from your ears. Just send them away from your ears. From here, let's look forward. Inhale to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, urdhva mudra. And exhale, padu mudra. Looking to the top of the mat, let's slowly walk ourselves to the top. Clasping opposite elbows, bending the knees deeply, coming into ragdoll pose. Shaking the head, yes and no. Releasing tension in the neck and the jaw. Feeling gravity, bring space between the vertebrae. And as you're ready, release the arms. Bend the knees and slowly roll up, stacking one vertebrae over the other. The head rises the glass. Beautiful. So from here, we're in our nice mountain pose. The core is engaged because the park's tailbone is tucking. Shoulders are rolling down the back. The palms pivot so that the pinkies face in. 
This helps to um, roll the shoulders away from the ears and down the back. From here, let's take a nice deep breath, reaching out and up to the sky. As you exhale, your palms to heart center. We'll pause here for a moment, flipping the palms down, so pressing wrists together, inhaling, and exhale, releasing hands down by the sides. Let's take another breath, inhaling out and up to the sky. Hold, really find length in the spine, lift up out of the hips. As you exhale, drop the right arm and reach over with the left. Inhale through center, exhale, other side. Inhale through center. Let's take it to the right again, dropping the right arm down. This time you might circle the left shoulder. And then inhale to center. Exhale, left arm drops, reaching over with the right. And then reaching back with that right arm to make a wide circle. And then returning to center. Let's bring hands to heart center. Inhale here. Exhale, twist to the right. Hips point forward as we twist. Are we still there? Okay. <laughs> Inhale to center. Exhale, take the twist to the other side. And inhale back to center. Let's bring the feet together. Come to the top of the mat if you aren't already. Lengthen the spine on the inhale. And as you exhale, sit in chair pose. Thunderbolt. Taking the arch out of the both spine, drawing the core in. Make sure you can see all 10 toes. Breathing here. How low can you go? And then on the next breath, let's fold all the way to the mat. As you inhale, step the left foot back, drop that knee. We're going to find your block or books if you have them and place them under the left arm. We'll inhale, reaching the right arm forward and up, taking a twist. Modified, rotated side angle pose. Again, you're going to just circle the shoulder here. Maybe twice in one direction and then the other. And then we'll return both hands to the mat. You can remove your blocks and inhale, pressing into the legs as you rise to Anjaniyasana. You might fold the mat over to pad your knee or your blanket. Inhale in here, lifting out of the hips. Exhale, cactus the arms. Inhale, pressing the elbows back, making space at the front of the chest, but making sure not to arch the spine. As you exhale, draw the arms together, and then release them down to the back. You can take both blocks here on either side of your foot. We're going to straighten into the right leg. And come to a halfway fold over the extended leg. This is modified Kamadhanasana. Split. And then bend back into that knee, remove any blocks. Tuck the left toes and step to the top of the mat, left foot meets the right. Inhale, lengthen the spine, halfway lift, and exhale, fold deeply. Send the tail to the sky, loosen the neck, the jaw. Plant the hands, and on the inhale, we'll step the right foot back. Patting the knee if you'd like. Untapping the toes. Finding your block if you use it on the other side, and elbows over the right hand. On the inhale, we're going to circle this right arm forward and back. And then the other direction. Pausing at the top for the twist. Breathing. And then the hands come down to the mat. We press into both legs, rising up on Janayasana. The um, arms rotate so the pinkies face toward one another to help release the shoulders away from the ears. 
And on your next side, we can cast those arms. Inhale, open across the chest, press the arms back. Exhale, bring the arms together in front. Let's stay here for a round of breath, feeling the expansion in the space between the shoulder blades. And then exhale, release the hands down, find your both blocks, and um, extend the left leg forward. Modify kind of mass. Spine is long, breath is flowing. Let's remove the blocks, bend into the left leg. We'll tap the right toes, and this time plant the hands and step back to plank. From here, we inhale, exhale, chaturanga, or to the belly. Inhale, up dog, or low cobra. Exhale, down and face. Breathing into the stability of this posture, feeling the connection to the earth through all the limbs. On an inhale, let's reach the right foot to the sky, three legged dog. Feel that stretch in the front of the right hip. Really press the foot to the sky, and on an exhale, bend the right knee and open that hip to the right. We might gaze under the right armpit and breathe. Inhale, return to the three legged dog. And as you exhale, draw the knee into the chest. We'll pause here, one breath. And then gently send it through, bending it between the hands. We'll set the left foot in slightly and rotate it, preparing for warrior one. And on an inhale, press it to both feet and rise up, warrior one. Excellent. Inhale in here. Exhale, release the arms behind you. Inhale, see if you can interlace hands behind you. If that's accessible, great. Inhale, pressing the chest to the sky. If this is too much, then we hold your hands to hips and roll the shoulders back. Gaze is high. As you exhale, we're going to pivot, hinge on the hips, and come into um, humble warrior. So the right shoulder is inside the right knee. Gaze is at the left toes. Pressing into both feet, especially the outer edge of the left foot. Seeing if you can draw the hips from the center line. Let's inhale, releasing the arms and rising back to warrior one. Exhale, hands down to the mat, and we'll step back to down dog. Pressing into all parts of the palms and the fingers, lengthening the spine by pushing them out away. On an inhale, let's pull the left foot to the sky, three legged dog. Really reach that. Leg high, keeping the hips square to the mat. On an exhale, the knee drops to the chest, and we pause. Inhale here. And on the exhale, slowly, gently plant that foot between the hands, preparing for warrior one. Right foot steps in, it comes to an angle, and we end up pressing to the feet, rising warrior one. Feeling our strong warrior one. You may drop the hands to the hips to remind you to orient both hips to the front of the room and tap the spine, tuck the tail slightly if it's possible. Inhale, lengthening the arms up. As we exhale, let's drop them down behind us and see if you can interlace the unusual way. Pressing the heart to the side, lifting the chin, looking up. And as you exhale, hinge at the hips. The bottom of your pose stays the same, it's just the top <laughs> that changes as we fold into humble warrior. So the left shoulder presses into the left knee, hips move toward the center line of the posture, feet are pressing into the mat, arms lift, breath is fluid. 
Let's release the arms as we rise all the way back up to warrior one. And then drop those hands to the mat, plant them, step back to plank. From here, you can take your vinyasa or modified vinyasa or skip it, or you can go to forearms or forearm plank. Dropping knees and hips and untucking toes coming to stinks. And then tucking toes, returning to plank and walking the feet in for dolphin. Wherever you are, you will stay for two full, slow, deep rounds of breath. Dolphin, step back to plank, drop the knees, untuck toes, and find your regular plank, <laughs> and then we'll press back to down dog and we'll all meet it down. Let's look to the top of the mat and walk ourselves or hop to the top. Inhale, halfway lift, spine is long. Exhale, fold. Inhale, through chair, rising up and legs. Exhale, all the way up, samaskiti. Beautiful. We'll do a little balancing here. So we're going to lengthen the spine in our standing posture, enter in the heart. As we exhale, sit in the chair. As we inhale, press up, right foot rises to hip height. As you exhale on that, we're going to send the leg behind us, toe to the mat. Inhale here, exhale, lift that knee forward. Inhale, exhale, chair. Inhale, left knee rises. Exhale, sit back. Inhale, knee rises. Exhale, chair. Other side, inhale, right knee up, exhale, foot back, inhale, knee up, exhale, chair, inhale, left knee up, exhale, left foot back, inhale, left knee up, exhale, chair, you got it. This time, inhale, right knee up, pause. So press into the standing leg, Make sure your eyes are in a drishti, a focal point, something that doesn't move. We'll be here for a few rounds of breath. And on your next breath, we'll send that right foot back. The toe touches. See if you can make this in and balance. Stay here for a few rounds of breath. Bring the hand 
hands uh, and elbows together. And we'll take eagle bind. So right is going to right elbow swoops under left, and then we'll lift the arms to the side and exhale into the hips. Come, come a warrior. Breathing here, feeling that expansion between the shoulder blades. Inhale, rising back up, release the bind and open to warrior two. Deep bend in the right knee, right knee tracks over the middle right toes, gaze over the right fingers. On an inhale, flip the right palm and let's Let's focus this, we're gonna do a reverse and a side angle, but let's pay attention to the arms and the shoulders here. So we're gonna lengthen the arms, inhale, reaching up for reverse warrior. Exhale, arms wide, and then we flip the palms, so right down, left up, and take this to the other side for side angle. Inhale, back to warrior two, palms switch. Exhale, more reverse warrior. Inhale, warrior two, palms flip, exhale, side angle. Hold for three, two, and one. Beautiful. Returning to warrior two, straight into that right leg. And then we're going to come to um, pyramid pose. So pivot hips to face forward. You might need to alter your stance and shorten it. Hands are going to come to the hips, lengthen the spine, and fold to a flat back. You're welcome to use blocks here under your hands for support. Breathing here, feeling the stretch of the hamstring, right hamstring, feeling the core engaged, crown of the head shines forward, breathe. And then remove any props, bend into that left leg and we'll reach for the mat. Uh, coming up onto the ball of the left toes and stepping forward, left foot meets the right. Inhale to a halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, fold. If it's accessible to you, you might slip your palms under your feet to release the wrists. Sending the tailbone to the sky. You can bend into one leg and the other if that feels good. And then release any bind. And on an inhale, we'll set the right foot back. Setting up for warrior one. On an inhale, rising all the way up to warrior one. Lifting out of the hips, gaze is high. As we exhale, palms and elbows come together. And then we scoop. I'm just turning to show you left under right for eagle bind. We'll lift that bind toward the sky, proud warrior. Maybe a baby back bend. Exhale, hinging at the hips, humble warrior. Pressing into the feet. Relaxing through the jaw and neck. Feeling the space between the shoulder blades. Inhale, returning, unwinding, and finding warrior two. Left knee bends deeply. The knee is aligned to the center left toes. Pressing through the outer edge of the right foot. Gaze over the left fingertips. From here, we're going to flip the left palm, keeping the arms straight. We lift left to the hand to the side, right arm drops, reverse warrior. Move back to warrior two. The palms rotate so the right flips up, the left is down. And then we'll swing the arms the other direction for side angle pose. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, reverse warrior. Inhale, warrior two, the palms flip, side angle. Pause here for three, two, and one. Return to warrior two, 
Straightening into that leg. Hands to hips. We'll pivot to the front, coming into pyramid. So I shorten my stance. And I want my feet um, on, on train tracks, kind of. So feet aligned to hips. From here, inhale to legs in the spine. Exhale, hinging the hips with a flat back. Finding your blocks if you like them on the other side. Here it goes. Core is engaged. Left hip draws back, right hip draws forward. We're breathing. Remove those blocks. We'll bend into the left leg, and the palm as hands. And we can step back to plank and move through vinyasa. Exhaling, chaturanga. Inhaling, back to top. Exhale, downward facing dog. You guys are rocking it. Breathing here, pressing the heels toward the mat, feeling the spine lengthen, palms pressing. Let's get a soft bend in the knees and walk the hands back to the feet at the back of the mat. From here, we'll inhale halfway lifting, exhale folding deeply. And then we'll rise with bent knees, rolling all the way up <clears throat> to mountain pose. Yes. Okay. So we're going to string our things together. String some things. So we'll be balancing. Find a drishti. Tuck your tail to engage the core, opening across the shoulders. Hands can be at the hips or in a at heart center, whichever is more comfortable. We'll press into the left leg and inhale, lifting the right knee. You can stay here or kick that leg out and hold. We'll be here for three breaths. Yes. Bring it lifted, look at that strength and balance. And then we'll step that foot halfway up the mat <laughs> and uh, lift the left foot off the mat, hinging at the hips, finding warrior three. So pressing the crown of the head forward and the left ball of the foot, the ball of the left foot back, keeping hips level to the mat. And try to keep the shoulders relaxed and open. Breathing here for three breaths. Soft bend in the right knee helps you to balance you. Look amazing, both of you. And then on your inhale, draw that left knee up toward the chest. We're going to cross it over the right leg as we sink into chair. So we've got eagle legs. I'm just going to turn so you see me. Eagle legs, and we're in our chair seat. And then we're going to swoop left arm under right and find full eagle. So the eyes are on a drishti, somewhere like if you have laser vision and you can see through your, <laughs> through your wrists. The shoulders, the elbows lift toward the shoulders. The spine is long, so you're taking the arch of the low back. Hopefully, still breathing. Hopefully, smiling. And then let's exhale, release everything. Shake it out. <laughs> Excellent. So we'll try it on the other side. Finding a strong mountain pose. Tail on the cuffs, core engages, heart is open, eyes on focal point. Inhale, lifting the left knee. Staying here or keeping that left foot out. Holding for three reps. Lifting it high. Pressing through the standing leg to feel some lift through the floating leg in the upper body. 
and then we'll take a step to get ourselves to the top of the mat. The right leg is going to float behind us, and we move into warrior three. So the torso comes parallel to the mat. The right leg lifts, the ball of the foot presses back, crown of the head presses forward, hands are on hips or at the heart. Breathing. Let's get a soft bend in the left knee. We're going to stand as we draw the right knee to the chest. Cross it over and sit in chair. So we're in eagle bind legs. And now we'll take eagle arms. So whichever arm you wrap the other way, do the opposite now. Lifting elbows to shoulder height, gaze steady, taking the arch out of the low back, feeling the length, the length and space between the shoulder blades, and breathing. And smiling. <laughs> I don't see any heads. I'm hoping they smile up there. And then let's release everything. Shake it out. We'll come to the top of the mat. Let's take a nice big breath, reaching the arms out and up to the sky. Exhale, drop the right arm to the right shoulder. Give yourself a pat. Reach it up to the sky, left arm to the shoulder. Inhale, reaching to the sky, and exhale, holding all the way down. Beautiful. From here, let's toe heel the feet, toes to the outer edge of the mat, the heels turn in, sinking the hips down, coming to Malasana. So the hips are low. If this is too intense, you can stack blocks under your hips. The arms are in prayer. The spine is long, chin tucks. Let's reverse the hands here so the backs of the wrists press one another. Breathing here. And then tent your fingers behind you, sit the hips on the mat. Let the soles of the feet come together and the knees fall wide. This is Baddha Pranasana, down to angle pose. Breathing here. You can take neck circles if that feels good. Drop your right ear to right shoulder, chin to chest, left ear, left shoulder, chin to chest. Then those big chin circles. From here, let's drop both knees in, extend to the left foot long, and we'll take an easy twist. So sitting up nice and tall, wrap left arm around right knee, twisting to the right. Returning to center, switch sides, right leg extends, left knee draws in, sitting up tall, exhale, twisting to the left, supporting yourself with tension fingertips behind you. And then extending both feet long to Dandasana, sitting up tall, Inhale, lifting up out of the hips. Exhale, folding toward the toes. Breathing here. Softening the back. Softening any areas of tension. Slowly 
slowly roll up on an inhale. Plant those fingers facing forward behind your hips. Roll the shoulders open, pressing the chest forward. And on an inhale, lift the heart to the sky. You can stay here or press into hands and feet for reverse plank. Three breaths. And then we'll gently release. We're going to come down onto our backs. So see if you can come to your forearm, one side, and then the other. And then scoop your hands under your bum, the palms face down. So we're coming into fish pose. From here, you're going to look to the sky, pressing the heart to the sky. You can stay here, or you might continue to lift the head and look behind you, and the head might drop all the way down to the mat. My hips slide back as I do that, and that's fine. And as you're ready, lift the chin back up, tucking the chin. And then we'll just release the bind under the hips and come all the way down to the back, onto the back. So we'll move into back bends here. I'll cue um, bridge pose. We'll do two back bends. So I'll, I'll first cue bridge. So feet are planted at hips distance. Knees are held at hips distance. <clears throat> if you have a block, it's a nice um, practice to keep the block between the knees because that forces you to keep your knees drawing in. This protects the low back. Arms are long, palms press into the mat. Let's press the low back into the mat and gently tuck the chin, lifting the tailbone slightly. From here, we inhale. And as you exhale, continue lifting the tailbone and then lift the hips and the low back, coming, climbing bridge. So we're pressing with feet and pressing with shoulders and feeling a lift in the hips. The glutes are engaged, the legs press toward one another, but you still want knees and ankles at hips distance. If you feel right here, you can interlace hands and maybe roll shoulders under the back. Let's hold for three more slow, deep, intentional breaths. And then we'll gently release the arms and roll the spine back down the mat the way it came. Moving props, let the knees fall open wide, the soles of the feet touch. You can cactus your arms. Breathing deeply. You might close your eyes. Just tuning in to how the body's feeling. How mind is feeling. Then we'll draw knees back to center and take a second back bend. It can be the same or it can be um, more modified. If wheel is in your practice and you'd like to do wheel, you're welcome to do that. I'm going to take a supported back bend by sliding my block right under my right hips. Great back bend, very relaxing and restorative. So whatever, wherever you are, come into your expression of the back bend and stay for about six breaths.
gently remove any props if you have them and slowly roll the spine back onto the mat. Set the feet to the wide edges of the mat. The knees will fall towards center. The arms can be cactus or wherever it feels comfortable. And then let's um, bring your feet to hips distance. Knees pointing toward the sky and cross the right leg over left, coming into kind of an eagle leg shape. We're going to let those legs fall to the left. The arm, the right arm is outstretched. The gaze follows the right hand. Final twist. You might feel this in the outer right hip. On the inhale, return to center. Switch the cross of the legs, so left over right. Inhale here, pressing the back into the mat. Exhale, letting the knees fall to the right. The left arm extends long and the gaze follows. Inhale, returning to center. We're going to move into the shoulder stand. We've done a lot to lubricate and strengthen our shoulders. So for shoulder stand, I like to practice with a blanket, and I will demonstrate how to do that. So if you have a blanket, you want it um, folded so that it is at least as wide as your shoulders. And I fold it up so that it's about, I don't know, a couple, three inches thick. And then I place that rounded edge toward the top of the mat, leaving space for my head at the top. From there, I turn around and lower myself onto the folded blanket so that my shoulders will line with the top of the fold. My head is fully touching the mat. This protects the neck because it gives us a little bit of space, a little bit of added space between the shoulders and the head. So from here, I press my hands into the mat come up onto the toes, and, draw, and then draw knees to the chest, pressing into the hands, rolling into brow pose. So you should always move into shoulder stand starting in brow. So brow, your legs are overhead, and you're bouncing on your shoulders and the back of your head. You should be able to move the chin easily, and if that's not the case, it's a sign you should come out. From here, the hands go to the low back, and you begin to move the weight into the hips. The legs begin to rise, and you're pressing the low back to keep the low back vertical. And then you send the feet to the sky. Ideally, you've got ankles and hips stacked over shoulders. So the gaze can be high. You want to try to draw the elbows in toward one another. You want to maybe close the eyes. Again, make sure that your breath is fluid. And then if you feel tension anywhere, see if you can send the breath to those places. Take 
one more deep breath here. And as you exhale, drop the feet overhead. Return to plow. Hands plant on the mat. And you slowly roll out of the pose. Coming onto your back. And removing your blanket. Excellent. From here, we'll draw the knees to the chest. We're going to rock up and back three times, finding a seat at the top. Or actually, find both poses again at the top. You may as well. So, after all that heart opening, you may try your boat and see if it feels any different. Letting your gaze float toward the sky. And then crossing the legs, rolling over them. From here, we're going, we're headed toward pigeon pose. So you can either do cat cow to reset the spine or take a full vinyasa, whatever the body is asking for. If you're joining me, I'm in plank for an inhale, pressing through the heels and the crown of the head. Exhaling halfway down, chaturanga, elbows in tight. Inhale, anchor to mukha, heart comes forward. Exhaling, adyogi mukha, hips rise, down dog. If you use a blanket for your pigeon pose, you might set it up now. You want it to be supporting the extended hip. So from down dog, we'll lift the right leg to the side, three-legged dog. Exhale, the right knee to the right wrist. Set the leg down and set the hip down. And this is where support comes in nicely. Left leg extends straight back from the hip. Gaze is forward. Let's stay here with a lengthened spine for two breaths. If you like a challenge, you might reach behind you and see if you can interlace, lifting up out of your hips. Maybe your back bend. And then releasing that, dancing the hands, and slowly walking it out to lengthen the spine. As you bring the head down to support in your resting pigeon. You can make a pillow of the hands or use a block under the head. We'll be here for six slow, deep breaths. Forward, making sure the left hip is supported. 
stay here for a couple of breaths. Or maybe you try to challenge, reaching behind you for a bind in a usual way. Yeah. Excellent. Lifting up the heart, the gaze, feeling the strength, the openness. And then gently releasing. Lengthening the crown of the head forward and walking the hands forward. Finding support for the head with your hands or walk. Six breaths here. and difference and 
change as we observe the body and all of its differences and changes from moment to moment, day to day, year to year. So let's meditate on this state of love and compassion for ourselves as the foundation we need to feel love and compassion for others. to deepen your breath. You're welcome to stay in Shavasana as long as you would like. If you're ready to close practice, you can introduce small movements into the hands and feet. Remove any props. Bend the legs. And slowly roll onto your right side. Pausing in stillness for a moment. Enjoying the sensation we feel as we close practice. Gently press yourself up to a comfortable seat. The eyes can remain closed. Tucking the chin and bringing the hands to the heart in prayer, Anjali Mudra. Mudra. Let's send gratitude to ourselves for our dedication to this practice, for making the choice to spend this time on ourselves. Gratitude to the support systems that have allowed us to practice today. Gratitude to the yogis who have come before us and all of those teachers who have inspired us. Now I'd like to send my gratitude to each of you for joining me in this practice, either live or recorded. It's my pleasure to have the opportunity to teach and share. Namaste. Thank you, thank you. It was a wonderful practice. I hope you enjoyed it. Great job, that was awesome. Oh, thank you, I'm yeah. so happy. Yeah, you're so good, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Take That's care. Wonderful to hear. Oh See yeah, you. it was excellent. Uh, <laughs> I hope you feel great. Yeah, I do actually. I actually could get into shoulder stand. I haven't done that in a while, so that was good. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, the blanket helped. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Yeah, love so thank you. Wonderful. Well, have a great day. You too. Bye. Take care, Mary. Bye, you too. Bye, everyone.